Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion, at least for the Atlantic Basin. It is the hurricane season now officially in the eastern Pacific, but we'll get to that in just a moment. This is the update for the 16th of May, 2017. Got some allergies or something affecting my voice again. It seems to happen every spring, so we'll just have to get through it. you got a lot to cover today, so... Uh, this will be interesting. All right, so starting off with one of my favorite areas, the sea surface temperature anomalies, and you notice a few small changes, but maybe important. A few more blue areas showing up now in parts of the Nino 3 region. And overall, the Enso area, really not that warm, certainly not warming the way we thought it might several months ago. You also notice that the deep tropics Indeed, off the northwest coast of Africa, pretty much through the Caribbean Sea, running basically above average. There's a few areas in here, you know, this is going to wax and wane from day to day. But overall, the trend has been for the main development region to go above normal. And you notice in the Gulf of Mexico, quite a change from recent weeks. Now a good deal of the Gulf is below the long-term average, and this really doesn't matter too much because we know good and well that the Gulf will be nice and warm uh, by June 1st and certainly by later in the season more than capable of sustaining very strong tropical cyclones should they get into that region. So this is what it looked like a month ago. This is back in April. So a little over a month ago and you notice a couple of things here. I like to compare and contrast things and see how things have evolved. We lost a lot of this heat in the eastern Pacific and we filled in with heat in the ocean this area here. So let's take a look at that if we go back to now. See, pretty interesting. Go back to April and we go to now and you notice here in the Nino area, yeah we lost a lot of that heat through here and we certainly gained a lot more uh, over in the deep tropics. So, you know, sea surface temperature anomalies going about the way I had expected them. No major changes, and we're not seeing any swings towards an El Nino. In fact, from Levi Cowan's website, this graphical plot of the Nino 3 index shows that today's number is only 0.35 above the long-term average, which is right here, zero average. So we're just a little bit above, but notice again, this is, works perfect. You see in April we had this pretty good spike and we were getting on up towards 0.8 Celsius above average. And then it fell off a cliff and has generally stayed kind of teetering off that cliff ever since. And now we have a decline again. Uh, we're not headed towards a La Nina. I don't see any indication of that, but warm neutral through the heart of the hurricane season and then maybe a weak El Nino in the winter, but that'll be too late to affect the Atlantic hurricane season. And again, further bolstering that idea is the subsurface anomaly chart. This was updated on the 8th of May, so it's a little aged, but nevertheless it shows you know, what I've been talking about. And you see there's just not much heat content up here along the surface. And as a reminder, the right side is the eastern Pacific, terrible E, but hey, I'm drawing this, right? And the west side is the western Pacific, the west side, the left side. And then you're going from the surface down 400 meters plus in the Pacific Ocean along the equatorial region. So this is like a slice through the ocean. And what we're looking at are anomalies. And yes, we do have a large area of positive anomalies out here, no doubt about it. But it seems to be suppressed and you notice I think it's interesting you got this angle this downward angle it's kind of being forced way down deep I mean we're still talking more than a hundred meters deep here that the most strong positive anomaly is close to 150 meters deep and that's nowhere near the surface so if it's not at the surface it's not going to affect anything in terms of sensible weather and there really isn't much of a mechanism for it to do so either. If we look at the different probabilistic uh, charts, this is the one most recently updated from Climate Prediction Center and the International Research Institute. And here's our 
time frame of most interest right here, the August, September, October. And look, they're basically neck and neck with neutral at this time frame, just barely winning out by a nose. All right. So at the peak of the hurricane season, under a 50% probability of there being El Nino conditions at all in the Nino 3.4 region, which is kind of out, not quite the middle of the Pacific, but you know we've been talking about this enough. I think we're pretty much convinced by now that unless something dramatic and unexpected takes place, we are not going to have an El Nino during the hurricane season, at least during the heart of it. And the Australian Poema model continues with this interesting, uh, no, I don't want to exit, sorry, <laughs> this decline right here. And then it kind of stays generally flat with a gradual rise. But the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia, their threshold for El Nino is 0.8 Celsius. NOAA's Climate Prediction Center is 0.5. This stays below all of that. Uh, I mean, the meat of the hurricane season is right through here anyway. So, you know, I don't know how much more evidence we can look at. It seems to all be there. And, of course, if there's something unexpected, then we will adjust accordingly, right? And uh, one more look here. The Long Paddock site, the SOI, the Southern Oscillation Index. Again, another measuring stick. And today's contributor, positive. And, yeah, the 30-day is definitely down there. But the 90-day, you know, marginals, negative four, and we're going to have a few more positives showing up. Let me put it in to basketball terms for you, okay? I'm a big college basketball fan, and not so much NBA. But right now is the NBA finals, the championships, the playoffs in the United States, right? And so you think about your favorite team, and they're down, you know, 12, 14, 16 points, and they're in the fourth quarter, of the game, they better start hitting some shots and closing that gap or they're just going to run out of time. And my analogy here is that every time we see positive numbers for more than just a day, it's going to delay any westerly wind burst continually. And it's just like, you know, the team that's down 14 points, they have the possession and they don't go down and score. Well, time's running out. They better do something fast or it's not going to happen. And so until I see the 90-day negative 7 and lower, I'm not going to be convinced that we're going to have the mechanism in the pressure pattern to get an El Nino to really lock in and hold on and do its thing. So every time we see these positive numbers here, there's just a further delay in, quote, scoring those points, right? And if we don't see that happening, the more positives, the longer it's just it's going to take. All right, so we're done with all that stuff. Let's look at actual temperatures. We're getting closer. But remember, I told you the Gulf is generally below normal over a large area. That being said, here is our 26 degrees Celsius isotherm. I'll kind of roughly outline it. So a good deal of the Gulf is plenty warm. The shelf water is warming up around Florida and parts of the bays here. Corpus Christi, not quite to Galveston Bay, but you know, getting there. Uh, and then the shelf water along the northern Gulf taking a little longer. We've had a lot of rain, so there's a lot of discharge coming out, or there certainly will be. I think it's already begun in uh, the Mississippi River Delta area. And you know, it doesn't matter. By August 1st, these water temperatures will be in the mid to upper 80s, more than capable of sustaining very intense tropical cyclones. And, you know, with that being said, you folks, especially in Texas, it's been a long time, 2008, since any hurricanes at all. And, you know, Florida still, uh, Matthew was very close, obviously, Hermine coming up into the Big Bend area. But still, this region, very, very, very lucky that we have not had any major Category 3 or higher hurricanes since 2005. That continues to be astounding, but I want to hammer it one more time. You folks in Texas, no hurricanes at all since 2008. So there is a lot that can go wrong with that kind of a drought. Just keep that in mind. We'll talk about that more, and I'll allude to that in just a moment. All right. So in the Atlantic, um, hey, you know, my area here in eastern North Carolina, this is my office. Water temperatures 
in the low 70s, upper 60s off the northern outer banks and the tidewater of Virginia. But look, there's the 26 degree area, 26 Celsius, of course, poking its way up the Gulf Stream. There's even a little island right there. So it's getting there. This water will definitely warm up quickly. And by, and by Memorial Day weekend, it should be fantastic, uh, water temperature wise. All right, so that's great. And then moving on along, I want to show you uh, these are interesting maps. I'm glad they've updated these. These are the points of origin. I got ahead of myself here. We're into June. Let me find the right one. So here it is, May 1st through the 10th. Why does the Eastern Pacific season begin before the Atlantic season? Well, I saw uh, a tweet from Michael Lowry, and he said there's, there's more activity in the Pacific at this time of year. And i got to go back and look and qualify that uh, in terms of the quality of what he meant. Uh, in terms of, So this map shows tropical cyclones, and that does not include depressions, I'm pretty sure. So this will be tropical storms and hurricanes and where they formed during the first 10 days of May. So we have two in the Atlantic and a big fat zero in the Pacific during this time frame. So I could understand that May 1st through the 10th, we wouldn't consider that hurricane season for either basin, no problem. Now, May 11th through the 20th, uh, now we just had Adrian form down here, very short-lived. You have 10 on either side, all right? If you count these up, there's 10 on either side. We add Adrian, and that makes 11. So there's only one more than the Atlantic Basin over time, yet in the middle of this time frame, May the 15th, right, yesterday, the Eastern Pacific season begins. But why not include the Atlantic? I, it's just, <laughs> I need to go and look and see how many of these became hurricanes and how many of these were hurricanes. And if this is more, which it probably is, then I think Michael Lowry, you remember him from the Weather Channel? Uh, brilliant guy. Uh, but when he said that there's more activity, I think is what he said, I don't remember verbatim, um, probably going to be that there are more hurricanes in the Pacific than the Atlantic, and so that would be the reason. But as we get on past the um, last third of the month, the activity in the Pacific definitely increases with only a few areas in the Atlantic Basin, and then we go to June 1st, and it's hurricane season across everywhere here. But you notice the deep tropics just a few weeks from now is not the place that we look. No activity out here, and it's all concentrated over in the western part of the basin, the Gulf of Mexico and the Northwest Caribbean, and then a good deal of activity south of Acapulco in the Mexican mainland area there in the Pacific, but nothing really brewing for the time being, so that's great news there. But this is where we will be looking, and I will certainly reference these maps more in the future. In the Atlantic, I did want to show you this. I got some uh, disturbing, unsettling news from one of our friends down here in Jamaica, Andre, telling me about all the heavy rain and the problems that that's causing. Have a very, very weak area of low pressure right here near the Caymans and associated surface troughing and deep tropical moisture converging over this area. Uh, and the rainfall has been excessive, lots of flooding and road closures, and that would probably be the case in southeast Cuba, parts of the southeast Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, and maybe even here on the Haitian Peninsula and parts of Haiti north of there, the Tiburon Peninsula and north. So this is going to hang around a while, unfortunately. Uh, this is what the surface map looks like from the GFS. Just wanted to show you what's what. So here we have this little isobar right here, kind of outlining this little trough area, this surface trough, weak low pressure. There's your moisture content, and the GFS showing that this will hang around for you know, anywhere from two to four more days off and on with moisture kind of streaming across the region as this weak energy uh, sort of moves slowly and then eventually, hopefully, off to the west with time. Not really conducive for development into a tropical cyclone. If we go back to that shot, you notice, and you say, well, why is that? Water temperatures here are definitely warm enough, and they are. But, I mean, this really illustrates the point that I make when I talk about shear. We don't even need a shear map. Look, upper-level winds are going across. 
We're not seeing any fanning out, so the winds are just too strong. However, that is not precluding this heavy rain from taking place, and I really appreciate Andre sharing that with me. I'll show you some video of that. Uh, I might do an update again tomorrow, or and, and certainly Thursday. I like to do getting this time of year a couple times a week, and I'll show you what's happening down there. Pull some of those videos down that he has sent. So hang in there, Andre. You know this at least shows you. All right, hurricane season is around the corner. We got to be ready for it. That being said. I want to let you know, you're hearing it here first. On June 1st at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm going to have a special live event uh, called Day One. And that's exactly what it is. It is Day One of the 2017 hurricane season. And it'll be a live YouTube event. And it's going to be really special. I'm going to have uh, just an amazing setup here in the office we're going to walk you through the seasonal forecast, which will all be out and updated. Everything from the NOAA forecast, which will be out, of course. And you guys will already know all of this ahead of time, so it's not like I'm going to break any news. But I am going to break it down and show you, to the best of my ability, why these forecasts are showing what they are. So we'll take a look at NOAA, the latest from Colorado State. Uh, as well as some folks that you might not have heard a lot from. Uh, NC State does a forecast. Uh, coastal, uh, what is it? Coastal Community. Oh, man, I can't remember. We have one here in southeast North Carolina, and it embarrasses me that I can't remember the name. It's a smaller university. And bottom line, I want to try to show you everything I can, including Jim Williams from HurricaneCity.com. His website's been up almost longer than anybody, if not longer than anybody, in the business. Even if he's just a hobbyist, he takes great pride in it. And I just want to talk about it all because it helps. Because if we can see that there is some kind of a consensus and we can make sense of it, you know what I mean? If we can look at it and say, well, this either makes sense or it doesn't make sense, then I think we can get a better idea of what to expect in the months ahead. All right? And uh, so that's uh, coming up Thursday, June 1st, day one. It's going to be a special live broadcast. Definitely going to be on YouTube trying to figure out a way to get it on Facebook Live as well. I know how to do it. I just have to get it implemented and hope that it works simultaneously. So uh, for sure, though, it'll be on YouTube Live. All right, so check that out. And I'll be reminding you, of course. All right, well, that is it for me for today, which is good. i got to let my voice rest. Covered a lot. We're getting closer to the Atlantic season beginning. And that being said, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and you'll get notifications. And remember to turn those notifications on. And when I post a video, you'll know immediately when it's uploaded. It's pretty amazing, right? So take advantage of that. And I'm uh, also on Twitter, at Hurricane Track. And we're almost there. It's almost time, so make sure you are ready. And we'll talk about it in great detail on Thursday, June the 1st. All right? Uh, like I said, I'll be back more than likely on Thursday. I want to let my voice rest a little bit more tomorrow. So let's take a look at things again on this coming Thursday, especially with what's happening down in the Caribbean. And we'll see what's going on with Andre in Jamaica. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I do appreciate it. I'm Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk again in about 48 hours.